One of the ways that we understand our faith in a, on our personal level, but also the big things about our faith, is by telling stories, true stories of ways that God touched our lives. Just like I told you the story of my first communion. And it, it reminds me of, of what a precious gift this was because those first communion rem memories are, are important. I'm 61 years old and I'm still remembering how important that was to me when I received my first communion. This is a lifelong memory, but it's a memory that's sustained by every time that we receive communion. So these are the stories we tell. One of them is, is uh, you know the, the story of Moses back when uh, the people of Israel were held as slaves in Egypt and, and God sent Moses to go and free them and then took a while, but the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, finally let these people go, and then they went through the Red Sea. Remember, there was all that water, and the Egyptian armies coming at them, and the water is over here, the Red Sea. What are we going to do? And Moses put his hands up, and by God's power, the waters divided, and the people could walk, walk across, no problem. So these are the great stories. Well, then, after they're free, and the Egyptians can't cross the sea, well, now they're in the desert, and in the desert there are snakes. Uh, in fact, they had trouble with that. They were being bitten by these snakes, and some were dying from it. And, but they were also starving because there were no farms. There were no, there were not, the desert was just nothing out there. And they cried to Moses, we're starving. And Moses prayed to God, and that's where God sent manna. Manna, is, they'd never heard of this before. But this manna was bread that in the morning they got up and it was all over the ground and they just picked it up and they had enough to eat all day long. And God fed them that way for 40 years. It's a great miracle. So that's, that's one of the stories and he kept referring to that as a bread from heaven. God fed us, okay? God took care of us. Now we have God himself who becomes a human being, right? baby Jesus born at Christmas time and then now as an adult he's teaching and he's healing people but there's this scene where, where and it's in all the gospels where, where Jesus uh, see, has this crowd 5,000 people and there are no you know 7-Elevens or anything around for food they have no sack lunches nobody people are hungry and he says uh, to the apostles well let's give them something to eat and the apostles go we don't have anything Jesus knows what's going on, what he's going to do. And one of them, Andrew, says, well, there's a boy here who's got some bread and fish, but what's that? Well, we'll say more about that little boy in a second. But it was enough, right? Jesus worked the miracle, and it multiplied all that, and they had more than enough to eat. Everybody was full. You know that feeling when your stomach is stuffed? And there were 12 baskets left over. What an amazing miracle. But there's something unique that happens during this miracle. First of all, Jesus, when the, when the story is told by St. John, he says it was the time of Passover. Hmm. Okay, remember that. And then what did Jesus do? It says, St. John reports, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and then gave it to them. But that sounds just like what we say at every Mass, where the priest says, at the Last Supper, Jesus took the bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them, and said, this is my, what, body. This is my body. That's the body and blood of Christ that you will receive. Now, I think this is just great, how God fed the people of Israel in the desert. God fed the 5,000, Jesus did, and then after Jesus now is going to leave and ascend to heaven, he wants us to know, I will be with you always till the end of time. Well, where? In his body and blood at every mass. And now you're old enough to be able to receive his body and blood and you've prepared. Now it still looks like bread and wine. It still looks like bread and wine, but we know that in the essence of it, it is the body and blood of Christ. And so that's, the, that's, that's what our faith tells us. And because Jesus told us that, and the apostles believe that, and the church has always believed that from the very beginning. And so that's a gift that you get to receive. Now let's think, th think, th think again about this boy. Remember, all he had were five loaves of bread and two fish. 
and there were 5,000 people. And the, the apostles, they probably said, does anybody have any food? We've got to figure out a way to feed everybody, right? And this little boy probably went, nobody's saying anything. He probably put his hand up. I have something. And they go, well, we'll see. All he has is just a little bit of bread. But, you know, Jesus probably looked him in the eye and said, thank you for sharing your bread. It will be enough. And this boy probably thought, I mean, he's probably your age. He probably thought, I don't know. How's this going to work? But then his bread is what Jesus took and said the blessing, and that boy's bread became enough for everybody. I think this is important for us to remember, especially the younger we are. We often think, well, the grown-ups really kind of run everything. Well, wait a minute. When Jesus wanted to feed 5,000, who gave him the bread? It was a young person. It was a young person, because he can take whatever small gifts we have, and he can make it so much more. And so when we receive the body and blood of Christ, it helps us to be able to give more, to be more generous, like Jesus is always taking care of us, and then also to be willing to share. To share what little we have, and it'll be enough. We do that here when people make those sack lunches at their homes, and then they bring them here on the weekend, and then we distribute that to the homeless. And, and it might be a family here making 10, another family making 10, but then they all bring them together, and after a while, with so many people doing that, we have 2,000 sack lunches. Every, almost, that's what we're doing about now, 2,000 sack lunches to feed the hungry who have nothing. So every one of us can do something. So I just, I think it's just important to remember when we receive the body and blood of Christ, it helps us to remember all the gifts that God gives us and then it helps us to think I should share. And just one last thing. I think it's another way to think about this every day. Every time we pray the Our Father prayer, you know, where it says, give us this day our daily bread. When we pray that, it's not just the bread, the food that we get to eat today, but it's also asking God to give us this special bread that nourishes us and then helps us to be able to share and be more loving.